When you package your brilliance into a solution for the people that need you, it should bring money back to you. That's what every single business starts as a solution to a problem. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for being here, for showing up, for always sharing, because you're helping to grow this network. Well, I'm excited because it is a new week. And as I always say, another guest who has a really interesting journey and plenty of advice for you. So let's get right to it. The topic is your unique gifts. And do you know your brilliance? <laughs> How much time have you spent finding out about your brilliance? Well, that's where my guest comes in. Joining me on the show is Nicole Roberts-Jones. She is the CEO of NRJ Enterprises. And she's someone who knows how to bankroll your brilliance. I love that. And she does this by drawing out the highest and best version of you. Now, Nicole spent a lot of time, formerly she was in the entertainment industry. She was doing talent management and casting, and she made this pivot to entrepreneur, and she launched her Brilliance Mastery Academy. She's also the author of four best-selling books, and the most recent book is called Find Your Fears. Well, I could go on and on, but I think it's time Nicole joins the conversation. So Nicole, welcome. Welcome to Women Worldwide. Yay, excited to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure. And bankroll your brilliance. I, I, We're going to get into that and everything that you're doing. But I always like to ask, how did you move? You, you were in the entertainment industry. You made the pivot to entrepreneur. What make you want? What made you want to make that shift? So to be honest with you, I didn't want to make that shift. So I started this journey in 1993 when I was two, because I'm 25, <laughs> right? So, so however many years it's been. So anyway, so with that said, you know, I had the career, like you just said, in entertainment that I dreamed of since I was seven years old. And I loved every minute of it. So back in 1993, I started working on Viacom's largest cable network. We had an outreach to 89 million homes on a weekly basis. Oh my, From huge. there, I worked uh, as in casting on the number one TV show on Fox, just to give you guys perspective. And then from there, I worked for a production group and what we produced generated over $12.6 billion a year. So I want you guys to get, I was playing really big. And if you know me, like I think you know me, I was going to all the hot Hollywood parties. <laughs> I was so, just going to say, you must have been one busy lady. Yes, busy in a good way. So yeah. I was living the dream. But can I tell you, at the dark of the night, it became my nightmare because I kept feeling like something was missing. And I felt yes. tormented by that feeling because I'm like, how could something be missing when I love my job? And I'm sharing that because somebody that's listening today, you might be in that same place or you might be in the place like in Michelle Obama and her book Becoming uh, wrote and I'm not spoiler alert, but I'm not gonna give away the book. But I think it was around chapter 10 where she talked about she matriculated through her legal profession, was great at it. We all know her story, went to Harvard, all that fun stuff, but she hated it. Mm -hmm. So she, and she did. She got to the same crossroad I did. I love my job, though. So once you guys listening may be in one of two places. And so. I couldn't figure out what to do. I didn't know what the heck was going on. And every time I talked to one of my girlfriends, they would say, are you crazy? Didn't we just right. go to this red carpet? And then we just get this VIP party. And so- Because it all looks so great. Mm -hmm. And so literally um, one of my good girlfriends one Friday night said, let's go volunteer working with youth at our church. And yes, it was a Friday night. And as I started working with young women that Friday night, when their eyes lit up, my heart lit up. And I said, oh my God, this is the thing. <laughs> but this was 1993. I didn't know what to call it. Now we know it's called coaching. Mm -hmm. But what I know for sure is for the first time, my soul was alive. And so I had a decision to make. Do I stay in this career where I felt like it was the only place anybody would ever define me? Mm. Or do I go after this thing that's rumbling in my soul? So I went after that thing. And so here we are 28 years later and it's grown, expanded. And so that's really how I started in the journey. And if you would have said entrepreneur back then, I would have been like, mm -mm, mm -mm. 
right? Because it sounds scary. So, but really that is when I kind of started it all. <laughs> well, that is an amazing journey. I love that you said that something happened in your soul and that you felt that and you trusted that because I think it's that choice and you get to a point where things are changing and maybe it does look and feel good, but that's a really big shift. So mm-hmm. it happened to you, you experienced it, you can help other people. What do you think would maybe stop somebody from making that shift to a better version of what they really mm-hmm. want to do? Mm -hmm. So I call it a purpose matriculation. So let me just say this before I say this, because we're going to say purpose and brilliance a lot. It's interchangeable. So I believe your brilliance is your purpose. So when you're all the way fully playing out in the thing you were born to do, your light is shining. So that's that brilliance in you. Right. So I call it a purpose matriculation system because we matriculate through education. Right. So we started a pre-K, some of us kindergarten, then elementary, then junior high, then high school. And then some of us go on to college and grad school and yada, yada, yada. Well, what I've learned is that our purpose matriculates the same way. And so for me, working in entertainment, I loved it. I'm great at it. I'm so good at casting and producing. Guess what I do in my business now? Casting and producing. Casting and producing. <laughs> so, but, but what me. happened is what I didn't realize is my purpose. God had a, a, an expansion of my territory there for me. And so what happened is it grew. So I started with teenage girls. I want y'all to get this now. I've been doing this 20 years, so hear me out. So I started with teenage girls and I realized now, had I started with women, I would have been so intimidated at 23 working with women, right? So right. God knew where to start me. So I I started working with teenage girls, helping them figure out what their purpose was and create a path. Now, secretly, my goal would be for them to get in college. I never told them that. Most of them did go to college, go to grad school, et cetera. But when those girls started having grown folk issues, (laughs) (laughs) grown women issues, like I have the job I always wanted and I don't like it. Or, you know, I don't understand why I feel disconnected or whatever that was. I started coaching them, which is really what I do now. But here's the thing I realize now. My purpose was going through a growth. It was growing. Every level was a new growth for me. So working with women and now I work with men, which is a whole nother growth. We're going to have a moment of silence for men. (laughs) But anyway, because I'm glad I'm speaking to women today. But anyway, so the goal is that I had to expand my ability to serve on a bigger, deeper level each time. So that's really what happens. I believe it gets hard Mm -hmm. to answer your question because we rely on where we are today and we get really, really comfortable with our title, our expense account, our corner office, the names on list, or maybe that's me, our names on list, right? Mm -hmm. And your comfort and your conviction can never coexist, never. Because what happens is when you're being called to another level, it is uncomfortable because it's usually something you've never done before or it's on a level that's bigger than where you are. So it causes you to have to go past who you already are. And I think for so many women, it's just hard. It's that resistance. So in order to find that, that that expansion is there, there, there's this, there's always so much more, whether you realize it or not. And the ability to realize it is also getting that resistance out of your path. That that's what I'm hearing you say. And that makes a lot of sense. There's something, uh, so you talked about purpose. Now I know that you kind of have this bridge it's between purpose, power, and profit. So when you, uh, and, and that must be bankrolling, right? It is, right. You're, you're brilliant. <laughs> it, talk a little bit about that bridge, getting from the purpose to feeling the power within you to mm-hmm. constantly expand and to get to the profit. Right. So um, I have what I call a purpose framework. So it's four steps. I'm going Mm -hmm. to answer your question, but here's what you guys have to know. I'm a teacher. So I'm always going to try to make sure you leave with something. Right. So four steps. One is passion. Like, what do you love? And you could do it all day long and never get paid. Like, I love my job. And because I'm also love my husband, sometimes I have to remind myself that I need to come out of my office. Right. Because I could just stay (laughs) in my office for hour upon hour. And then the second is what are you proficient in? Because you can't love it and be horrible at it. And you can't be really, really great at it and hate it, which is where Michelle was. She was good at it and hated it. So yeah. those two have to correlate. So if I give you an example, when I knew I had a shift coming and I was trying to figure out what it was, I love to shop. So I thought maybe I'm meant to work in fashion. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I realized after the first try, <laughs> yeah, I, I like to shop. For me, I'm not trying to shop for anybody else. I'm not trying to work in a store. It was it was horrible. Let me just say that, right? At least so you found two, it. You figured it out, right? <laughs> so oh my important. Gosh. I still love to shop though, but anyway, so those two have to go relate. Then the third one is what problem does it solve? 
Because ultimately, you have to understand that that gift in you is not for you. Whether you work in a corporate function or where you are starting a business, in a corporate capacity, you're working on it with a team and you're working to a predictable result. If you have a business, even if you're the only person in your business, you're still working to a predictable result. So your gift solves a problem in the methodology that gets to that result. So if I go back to purpose power, the power is between those two. When you begin to understand who you are and how you were created, that you have a natural propensity for some things, some natural gifting for some things. So listen, when I was seven, I, I went to my girlfriend's wedding I've known forever, a couple of years ago, and they were all teasing me, all my childhood friends about how we will be playing. And I would go, let's play Batman and Robin. Okay, you be Batman and you be Robin and you rob the bank. I set the whole scene, <laughs> who does that? <laughs> That's how I think, because I'm thinking about who should be in what role. Right, That's what right. I do as a coach, right? So part of your talent start, management too. <laughs> right. So once I start to understand that it's standing, that that's the power, right? And, and stop apologizing for it. Some people are going to say, ooh, and people do say, ooh, Nicole, you're a lot. Mm, I'm probably a lot for you. And that's okay. I'm not everybody's coach, but I'm somebody's coach. If I stand in the true power of who I already am and then grow it. So, so it's passion, proficiency, problem. And that could be people too, by the way, problem and people, because there's a group of people that need that solution, right? So it really could be five steps. Then the last step is profit. Because here's the thing, when you package your brilliance into a solution for the people that need you, it should bring money back to you. That's what every single business starts as a solution to a problem. So you have to understand you have a natural born solution in you. So if you're willing to do the work, you should get paid. For your Absolutely. Brothers. Yeah. Sometimes I think people are, are focused a little bit too much on the profit yeah. where it, it's more the passion. It's, it's more proficient, the problem solving and yeah. that alone will get you there into the profit. So mm-hmm. I, I really love that because I do believe that your bridge makes a lot of sense. And it's not just as you're speaking, it's true. It's not just about the entrepreneurial woman out there, but it Mm -hmm. could be the woman in a corporation with a team or or a man or or whomever. So there's there's a lot. Can I just add to what you just said? So those of you that are in a corporate function or a nine to five function, because everybody doesn't work in corporate, I worked in entertainment, right? So think about instead of profit, you might think of position right? Because your position brings the company profit. Get Mm -hmm. that. So you've got to position your brilliance, knowing that your passion, your proficiency and the problem you solve. I remember I had a client who worked for a, um, let's say a large bank. I was trying to figure out the way to say it's a bank we all either have been to or you've heard of, I I bet you. And she loved where she worked. And as Jim Collins would say in good to great, she was just in the wrong seat on the right bus Mm -hmm. because she loved where she worked, loved it, loved it, loved it. But she couldn't figure out why she hated her job. But I love where I work. So to make a really long story short, she was doing a lot of project management, which is a lot of organizing, but it's not really a lot of working with people always. She loved people. So in doing the work and investigating all her passion and her proficiency, we realized that sales was the place she should be in. And literally, then we carved out a path. How did we get in sales? Let me tell you, she got a raise. She shifted her, her career into the sales department. I mean, she started getting raises like in two months, in four months. And she was like, why is it happening? Because she's in a place that she loves and it just helps you, that power, that light is on. Dare I say, bling, bling, right? So that's really what happened for her. <laughs> it's the same that's thing. Awesome. Well, the, there's, a, there's so many things that I want to ask you, but as I'm talking, speaking with you and looking at you i see your book <laughs> behind you so yeah. find your fears maybe just chat a little bit about what do you want yeah. people to get out of your book so i'll tell you so funny i have to say this and these are other women so you don't have to say a joke so my husband i was saying baby you can find your fears he was like let me explain to you i can be a whole lot of things for you but i will never be fierce so it's <laughs> such a, a woman conversation so it must have been maybe about 10 years ago i was watching tv and i was watching beyonce and I would say I was hating on her a little bit, but I'd be lying. I was having a full on jealous moment because you guys need to know if I could sing, she would have a run for her money. OK, because I can dance, but I cannot sing. So in the middle of me watching her and being fully jealous, what dropped in my spirit is you have fears, too. Mm-hmm. And so then I started thinking about why did Beyonce create Sasha Fierce? I want y'all to get this. 
So here we go with that purpose matriculation. So she had been in a group for years, Destiny's Child, right? And you guys, if you guys follow Destiny's Child, there were four members. I remember left, Destiny's two, Child. Two, mm-hmm. two, two, eight, two left, two came in, one left. It was like all of this. So she went through so much to fight to keep that group. But then there came a knock on the door for her to be a solo artist. See, does yes. she stay comfortable after all she'd been through or does she go to her next level? Mm-hmm. So she had to conjure up. Sasha Fierce mm-hmm. had helped her. That's an alter ego that helped her go after her next level because, you know, being in a group, you always got people next to you that you can lean on. When you're solo, there's nobody out there but you. No, just you. And so, and so it's, it, it really had me start to think about what would happen if every woman I was blessed to work with stood in the full power of who she was born to be ap- unapologetically. She stopped mm-hmm. caring about what people thought. She stopped caring about her resume, her bio, which is done. And she went after the next best version of her. So really my calling, I say in this thing called life is to help women live in their own fears into oh. that own uh, alter ego, that next level. I love it. I think there's like you fears in everybody. And yeah. I can't wait to get my hands on that book. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of you out there, get your hands on Find Your Fierce. It, it sounds yes. amazing. Well, why, if you will, share a moment because there's so much that you've done and, and look at the bridges that you've created and everything around bankroll your brilliance. And by the way, every time I say bankroll your brilliance, I want to say bankroll your billions. <laughs> I love that. Come on, say it. Come on, say And so even with that, go. can I just say something real quick with that? What I learned in my own journey, ladies, is this. You, God gave you a gift to multiply. So when you learn all the ways to multiply, it's just one thing to learn what it is. It's another thing to realize that you can serve more people if you learn all the ways, which is what I get passionate about, that you can package it and serve people with it. It's how you bankroll your brain. It's how multiply comes nice. back to you and to all the people that you serve. Very good. Well, maybe you could just share one of those moments, Nicole, when, I don't know, it was a big aha moment, an uh-oh moment, something that really has stuck with you mm. and you you want to share and help others. Mm. So here's my, um, you guys, I'm a storyteller, so I'm going to try to tell the story quick. And I tell stories because I want you to get the the, the transformation I want you to understand. So as I just told you about multiplying. So I've been doing this again, 28 years, 17 years in my business looks successful on paper. So I had a nonprofit working with teenage girls. And back then I had finally started a for-profit coaching women like all of you. So in my nonprofit, I had 10 chapters of my youth program in 10 cities across the country. We were growing by leaps and bounds. That little program I started at my church grew. Then um, in my for-profit coaching women, I had a hundred percent coaching client roster. So in 2010, I wrote my first book thinking I could give my principles to women Mm -hmm. and I could also use that as kind of a a fundraiser for my nonprofit. Well, that's when everything kind of took off and I started getting invitations to speak all over the country. So I'm sharing that with you because obviously I can tell I like to talk. So speaking, I was on fire. I was doing everything I dreamed of in 1993, but I was only making $13,000 a year. So I had pretty much a big fat community service because I wasn't 13,000 is below the poverty level. So yes, I had a daytime job and I was teaching that as an adjunct professor. I'm sharing that with you because my aha moment came because listen, earlier I said your resume, your bio could be in your way. Hmm. That was me. Hmm. So I kept saying, I should know how to do this. Why am I not making money? I should know how to do this. I'm teaching program development in a graduate school. I taught it at USC for five years. And then I moved to Boston, started teaching at Boston University. I should know how to do this. And yet my business kept failing. Hmm. So it wasn't until I hired a coach. And so my biggest aha is that Hmm. two things. One, you can't read the label from inside of the jar. So what I mean by that is you're inside your jar. So there's things that are intrinsic to your DNA, your distinct natural ability that you don't realize that you do. So Mm -hmm. it takes an outside person to show you. So it took me hiring that coach in that first coaching session. (laughs) All she did was show me me. And I literally went from 13,000 to over 200,000 within six months. And and I'm going to tell you, it's because I kept relying on what I already knew. And one of my favorite quotes is the tools on this level are not sufficient for your next. So my biggest aha moment is that I had taken myself as far as I could take myself. And I realized I had to invest at the level to which I wanted to see the return. And the rest is history. 
That is an amazing story. When you found your coach, that first coach, Mm -hmm. was it the first coach that you went to, or did you actually Mm -hmm. go through a series of coaches to figure out who was best for you? Okay. So as you know, probably by now, I'm not the traditional. So I didn't realize I was going to hire a coach. I literally prayed one night when at 13,000, I had had enough. And I said, listen, I know this is my purpose. God, if this is you, you better show me something because I'm done. Right. That's exactly my prayer. And I got on a free webinar. That free webinar invited me to go to an event. And I had never, I, 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 listen, I'm a social worker. I'm an entertainment girl that went to social work school. So this whole personal development industry, I knew nothing about, but yet I'm serving in it, but I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> I came through the back door is what I feel like. So that event was the first event I'd ever gone to. It was at that event that my coach was speaking on stage and it just hit me in my spirit. That it's her. I need her. Oh, so, Nicole, that's the universe. The universe, you, you stepped out of the way, you sent yep. it out there to the universe and the universe with, there's no resistance, put those pieces in place for you. And, that and there was, listen, is your coach. And there was resistance. Let me, I want y'all to be clear. She cost 30,000. I just told you that my business only generated 13,000. I couldn't afford it, but I couldn't afford not to do it. It's like, I had to risk it mm-hmm. all to gain it all. So it's because I knew in my spirit, I was like, okay, I get it. God It's like, I could feel him like pushing me toward her. I was scared. Knees knocking teeth. Sure. I didn't put out my credit card plan. Oh, please let it go through when they charge it. Right. <sighs> so I, thought I was only making 13,000. So, so yeah, I had to do it afraid. That gives me chills. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's going to help a lot of other women out there as they're yeah. thinking of trying to expand and to really be fierce. So <laughs> I just want to ask you a quick question on stress. You do not seem like somebody who gets stressed out, but I'm sure your day, you're being pulled in so many different directions. Do you ever get stressed and how do you manage your stress? So I do get stressed. Um, usually it's overwhelmed, right? Cause I have mm-hmm. so many things going on. So a couple of things, one, I had to understand and learn that no is a complete sentence. You don't have to explain to anybody else. Your no is your no, but what you could do is uh, my past used to teach me find, make them feel like you're saying yes. So if I'm saying no, instead of saying no, I give it edit. Like if you say, Nicole, can you meet me at two? I can meet you tomorrow at three. So then again, it doesn't make me feel like I'm saying no. And it still makes me feel like I'm honoring that person. So that's one. The second is I had to get everything out of my head. I think my stress comes when it's so so many things coming at me. So if I could stop long enough to get it out of my head, especially I'm a woman of a certain age. So my memory doesn't work like it used to, right? So I'm 52. (laughs) Okay. So 52, my memory doesn't work like it used to. You don't look in your fifties, Nicole. (laughs) I appreciate you. Look, I work hard at that. It's called dermatology, but anyway, so, so getting a facial every month, but anyway, so I have to get it out of my head so that I can get out of overwhelm. So stress comes when you have a lot of things coming at you. And when you want more, that's not going to stop. Right. So you've got to find what, and then the very last thing Mm -hmm. is what brings me peace of mind is water. So my husband and I built a pool, we just moved, but in our previous house, it was like a, a, you know, a whole thing. We built ourselves a pool. I go, I have to go to a beach at least once or twice a year. So it's like finding that thing that gives you peace of mind. So you just sit and let it go. Peaceful. Mm -hmm. Very peaceful. Oh, calm. I love it. Well, you've shared so much already and you've given a lot of advice, but I can hardly believe I'm going to ask you for parting advice. (laughs) So Nicole, please share some parting advice for all those women out there about how they can bankroll their brilliance. (laughs) So the biggest advice I can give to a woman, and I'm sure all your women that are watching, all of you are high, highly successful women, is that your comfort zone is where dreams go to die. Your comfort zone Mm. is where dreams go to die because if you're trying to stay comfortable, you'll never go after your next level. You know, when I think about next level, I think about, (laughs) this is gonna be a horrible example, but I know you guys get this, you know, all the pants you can't fit or maybe it's just me because of of my COVID weight, right? (laughs) But it's because I'm expanding, right? So if you think about your gift, now this expansion is not good for me, but your gift expansion is, So sometimes the role you're playing no longer fits your gift. It used to, but it no longer fits. So what do you need to do or who do you need to become to go after your next level of you, of your gift, of your brilliance? That's huge. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And last question, super easy. Where can people find out more about you, your work, the coaching you do, and your books? 
Yay. So I have a free book for all of you. Those of you that have been thinking about it and been trying to figure out how to start a business. I have a gift called Alongside My Nine T O two five dot alongside my nine to five dot com is a free ebook that walks you through how to create a business without quitting. Most people tell you to quit. I'm like, mm -mm, don't quit. You need the income. You heard my story. So the other places to find me, my new favorite thing is Instagram in Roberts Jones, always giving tools, tips on Instagram. And then my website, Nicole Roberts Jones.com. Well, you are amazing. And truly inspiring. So thank you, Nicole. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your journey. So much great advice that I know everybody appreciates. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate you and your time. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. You know what I always say, keep the conversations going, the feedback coming, and you know where to find me. I am on Twitter. I'm at D Breckenridge. Find me on LinkedIn. I'm hanging out there a lot too. Or just email me, Deirdre, at pureperformancecom with two ms.com. Thank you. Until our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.